from the John C. Hench Production Arts Studios in Peoria, Illinois, Video Max Limited presents Mid-State Magazine with your hosts, Kayla Neitz and Kyle Penn. The news with Aaron Morton and Danielle Heimsky featuring your Mid-State reporting team. Sports with Katrina Baumgartner, Get Real with Nikki Garabrandt, Stephanie Robbins is on the beat. State of the Arts with Brooke James. Rebecca Williams is in the spotlight. Anna Tassi takes us about town. And about crew with Noel Method. And now, from America's friendliest city, Mid-State Magazine. Take it away, kids. Hello, and welcome to Mid-State Magazine, and happy Halloween. I'm your host, Kyle Peck. And I'm Kayla Neath. Thank you for joining us. Today is our Halloween segment. Kyle, yes, you is. are in a very festive outfit, purple you, and black. Thank you very much. And Today you are in a very am, festive outfit as well. Yes, I am acting as Jillian Michaels. I have my protein bar. I have my bottle of water. So that's what I'm doing today. Awesome. But you were telling us a little bit about a haunted house, right? Yes. Want to know what the uh, most terrifying, which state has the most terrifying haunted house? I do want to know. Tell what, me. Okay. <laughs> it, is, it is called the 13th Floor Haunted House in Denver, Colorado, where they okay. use life-size animated figures powered with Microsoft Connect technology mm -hmm. to interact and frighten everybody. So do they still have people going around and jumping out at you, or it's all in, like um, media type things? It's media type things. Okay, very cool. So yeah. I wonder if that would actually be a little bit, you know, it's supposed to be the scariest, but to mm -hmm. me the scariest part of a haunted house is the people coming yeah. out, you know, like you're afraid they're going to touch you. Yeah. Not that they're actually allowed to, but that's always my fear. I'm like, don't touch me, don't touch me. I think it just depends on the experience and yeah. how, you, how you convey that experience. Do you like going to haunted houses? Yes and no, it depends. I like, I like going to them, but mm -hmm. like, I don't like the fear factor in all of them. I hate anticipating for it and then thinking, oh, go, okay, ah, and then you, and then you get scared. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's check in with the news team. Good evening. Welcome to Midstate Magazine. I'm Aaron Morden. And I'm Jill Heimsky. Let's take a look at the news. It's 30 years and counting for a local art exhibit. First United Methodist Church in downtown Peoria holds an annual fine arts exhibit each year to promote local artwork. This year displays work from more than 70 different artists. Terry Harder was one of several people to organize the first annual exhibit years back. He says although it's held in a church, the event is, about is not about religion, but about appreciating art. The event goes from October 19th through November 9th. After a tornado, tornado last year ravaged Washington's La Hood Park, the area is a little greener today. Forty new trees were planted in hopes of restoring the area to its former beauty. It was made possible from a grant from the Alliance for Community Trees and CSX Transportation. Washington Park District Executive Director Doug Damry says the community is slowly returning to normal. New research suggests knowing calorie information may not influence buying choices. That's unless a person knows what it's going to take to get rid of the extra calories. John Hopkins Research posted signs in, stories on a, on, in stores in a low neighborhood of Baltimore, saying a person would have to run for nearly an hour to burn off just one 250-calorie drink. Researchers interviewed teenagers after they left the store. Forty percent said the signs influenced their drinking choices. Even the president's not immune from having his credit card decline. President Obama revealed he had his card decline last month while at a restaurant during the United Nations General Assembly. The president was signing legislation to enhance credit card security measures against identity theft on Friday as he mentioned the embarrassing incident. Apparently, he doesn't use his credit card very often, so there was the suspicion of fraud. Luckily, Michelle had hers. The owners of the Madison Theater and NXG Developments have not reached an agreement to buy the historic building. With the help of city staff, the two groups entered into an exclu exclusive negotiating agreement in February. That agreement was extended three times, but has now expired. This allows the city and owners to look elsewhere. The Madison Theater is on the historical register of National Register of Historical Places. The facts of Ebola tell themselves. Ebola has infected more than 8,000 people and killed about 4,500 in West Africa. The outbreak has been going on for months. In the United States, there are eight confirmed cases that have been or are being treated. Of those eight cases, one death. Experts say there is no question that Ebola is a serious disease, but CDC officials stress if exec executed properly, the US, U.S. has the resources to contain and treat it. 
However, containing fear is another story. Certain organizations have reportedly severed any possible connection to Ebola, even if it means cutting off ties to a whole continent, city, or state. The common cold and flu are much more contagious. More people die from the flu every year than from Ebola. In 2009, about 284,000 people in the U.S. died from the flu. The Central Illinois Better Business Bureau is charities and businesses. It has also seen more than 100 fundraising pages claiming to, be, claiming to help prevent Ebola and treat Ebola victims. The BBB warns also to be wary of Ebola prevention kits, vitamins, and other sold items. Now let's go to Katrina for sports. Thanks, Danielle. On Wednesday the 15th, high school coaching legend Wayne McLean passed away after a two-year battle with lung cancer. This came as a surprise as almost nobody knew about his battle with lung cancer, not even his family. A lot of people will remember McLean for how humble he was and his humility. Others will remember his incredible coaching career he had as head basketball coach at Manuel High School. McLean won the high school coach of the year and multiple high school state championships. Along with being a high school coach, McLean was also an assistant coach for the Illinois Illini and Kansas State Wildcats. Illinois Central College women's soccer team gets off to a fast start in a 5-2 win over College of Lake County. The victory came at ICC Cougarplex with great support from hometown fans. The Cougars got off to a fast start when Bryce Farmer found Megan Wilson one minute into the game for her first goal of the game. Wilson had a great game overall with leading the team and scoring with three goals. The Cougars had a great defensive game, not allowing Lake County to score until the 80th minute. With the impressive win, ICC improves their overall record to 3-13-1. With the loss, Lake County drops their record to 7-6-1. Peyton Manning entered Sunday night's game with 506 career touchdown passes. Manning threw two touchdown passes in the first quarter. The second tied Manning with Brett Favre at 508 career touchdown passes. In the second quarter, Manning threw an eight-yard touchdown pass to Demarius Thomas. This gave Manning 509 career touchdown passes and a new NFL record. To celebrate this new record, Broncos wide receivers decided to play keep away Manning from the ball. It came out after the game that the celebration of keep away was planned by Manning during Friday's practice. The Broncos organization had a small celebration for Manning's achievement by posting on their video board and by announcing the new record over the audio system at Sports Authority Field. Manning had a total of four touchdown passes in the game, bringing his overall total to 509. That's all for sports. Back to you, Danielle. Thanks, Katrina. A vaccine to protect against Ebola could be available as soon as 2015. According to the World Health Organization, the WHO today addressed the two leading candidates being explored as a potential vaccine against Ebola. One vaccine is currently in, on clinical trials in the U.S., Oxford University, in the U.K., and Mali while the other has trials underway at Walter Reed Hospital in Maryland and at the National Institute of Health. They warn that a lot is still unknown about how effective these vaccines could be. You know, I feel like this is like when the H1N1 virus hit, everyone was all up in arms for about a two, three weeks and everything just blew over. Exactly. Well, that wraps up Mid-State for the week. I'm Katrina Baumgartner. I'm Aaron Morden. And I'm Dale Hayimski. Have a great night and be sure to join us next week. Thank you, news team. Well, Kyle, you were telling us a little bit about something in Toys R Us stores, correct? Yes. Have you heard of the TV show Breaking Bad? Yes. Okay. Well, they, uh, Toys R there were, there were Breaking Bad dolls made mm -hmm. and produced for Toys R Us, and those were recently taken back because a Florida mom signed a petition last week with 8,000 signatures. And basically, she, lo she loves the show, but mm -hmm. the problem is she said that the dolls are a dangerous deviation to family-friendly values. Mm. So they are not at Toys R Us anymore. Well, you know, I can't say I'm surprised because I've never actually seen the show, but I know that the premise of it is about a man who can't afford to pay for, like... Yeah, it's it's basically about a high school chemistry teacher who turns into a meth dealer right. because, so so that she can uh, provide, so that he can provide for his family. support for his family. Okay, I see. Yeah, I can't say I'm too surprised that they would start taking them off the shelves then. Yeah, I can understand that point of view. Just because of so much drug use, but, you know, there's so much going on with Ebola and everything like that. I don't know if you'd actually ever want to travel at this point in time. Not really. But I know you're from California, is that right? Yes, I am. Okay, so that's a pretty long plane ride. Yeah, um, my plane ride is basically going to be from P 
Peoria International Airport to Denver, Colorado, and then to wow. California. Wow. So okay, not, so you have to make a couple stops. So, yeah, at least two stops, but it shouldn't be that big of a problem. Well, if you need to buy a ticket, the cheapest day to buy a ticket is on Sundays. Yes. All right, thank you. Let's see where Anna takes us on About Town. Have you got your Halloween costume yet? If not, with Costume Trunks, high quality and unique costumes, you'll be the talk of the town. The Costume Trunk has provided customers the best experience in Peoria for over 30 years. Owner Mr. Spain explains that his favorite time of the year is finally here. Halloween uh, is always busy. It's a little busier this year because Halloween falls right on a Friday. There's a little more uh, extra excitement, uh, more parties, more contests, more enthusiasm. This store offers a variety of specialty costumes for teens to adults that you won't find at a regular retail store. We offer a different product, I think a superior product, but they certainly have a, a, a market, you know. Uh, we don't do any children's costumes at all, and they do a lot of that. We don't do any props or anything like that. We're here all year long and for theater grade type costume. So for the customer that wants something a little bit better, then, then we're the place, I think. Not only does Spain sell costumes, but he finds customers coming to buy theatrical makeup, hats, wigs, and various accessories to go with their outfit as well. We have rental grade costumes, that's the high end costumes. We also have a line of party grade costumes and those that uh, are retail and we sell those. Um, they're retail costumes, but they're a little better quality than what you would see at some of the other stores. The costume trunk is located on the corner of Main Street and Sheridan. For more information, go to CostumeTrunk.com. For Mid-State Magazine, I'm Anna Tassi. Thank you, Anna. She always does a really great job of finding us really cool places to go and visit. Yeah, she have does. Have you ever been to the Costume Trunk? I have. I actually bought some uh, hair for Prince for a, for a theater thing. Really? Mm hmm Okay, I've actually never really gone out and bought a full costume because... Frankly, I didn't really want to spend the money on it, so yeah. that's why I try to get creative with things I already have and making mm -hmm. my own costumes. So that's always been fun for me. But yeah. are you going as anything particular this year? Uh, I was planning on going out as Scorpion, which is basically a video game character from a game series called Mortal Kombat. Okay, so how will you dress up like that? I actually bought the entire outfit on Amazon Very for cool. about like thirty-six dollars. Oh, I that's a, not too bad. And I bought a, and I bought a sword as well for like twelve bucks. So it wasn't. It wasn't. It's not that cheap, but it's not that expensive either. Yeah. Well, Halloween always reminds me of scary movies. Do you enjoy scary movies? Every now and then. Okay. Right now, I know that Annabelle is out, and I haven't seen it, but I did have a friend go and see it, and she said it, because I'm I completely, I don't do scary movies. I don't either. She went and not saw it for me. She said it was pretty good, and that she, it was actually very scary. She was shaking the whole time. Okay. So we'll see how that you know, I don't know yeah, if I, you'll I, go and see it. Yeah. Actually, uh, recently, I was watching a movie called <laughs> Thanks Killing. Which is a three hundred dollar budget movie, really? uh, basically about this, about this turkey. Yeah, three hundred dollars okay. about this turkey killing off people. Wow. Well, speaking of movies, let's check in with Nikki to see one of the latest movies on Get Real. Hey everyone, welcome back to Get Real. I'm Nikki Garbrandt. Today we take a look at the box office hit Fury, starring Brad Pitt and Shia LaBeouf. The film is set during the waning days of World War II, but as Pitt's character says, before it ends, a lot more people have to die. Fury is a gritty, muddy, bloody war film, but it's different from traditional films about World War II. I, I think in typical kind of war movies, they're sort of the story, they're sort of the journey and then the victory at the end. And, and you know, this movie isn't like this. I feel like this is a very, very narrow, honest look at this one tank unit's life. While the army is advancing on Berlin near the end of the war, we meet a war-bonded tank crew of five men led by Sergeant Don Collier, nicknamed War Daddy. When one of the crew is killed in combat, he's replaced by a rookie soldier, Norman Ellison, who is trained as a typist. War Daddy teaches Norman to be a man and overcome his fears. That's the story. That's the movie. And it takes place in this, this arena of war, but it really at its heart is, is, is a father-son son story. If Norman is a son, his other tank mates are his brothers, and this realistic depiction shows what war does to such a family under extreme stress. And people who are at their best and at their worst, often simultaneously, as they try and just survive another hour, another day in combat. Best job I've ever had. The LA Times reports that director David Ayer tried to make the group of actors more cohesive by having them train together and participate in sparring sessions. This led to one of the lead actors, John Bernthal, being hit in the face so hard that it drew blood. Now that's getting into character. I'm Nikki Garbrandt, and I'll see you next time for Get Real.
Thank you so much, Nikki. Well, you know, everything in entertainment, speaking of entertainment, like Nikki just said, um, some people will go a little bit farther to have a costume. You were telling us about Renee. Not exactly a costume, right. but, but she decided to use plastic surgery to completely change her face. Now, sure. Renee, Renee Zellweger is now completely unrecognizable, and mm -hmm. now the social media, some of the social media hates it, some of them don't like it. What, what would be your opinion on, like, plastic, plastic surgery? surgery? You know, I've actually seen a couple of the shows where it's called plastic surgery gone bad or wrong or whatever it is, okay. and some of these people will go in with, you know, tons of money to spend and be prepared to transform themselves into Justin Bieber or Kim Kardashian. And there's a boy who actually did it. He wanted his forehead smaller. He, like, did all this, over $100,000 in plastic surgery. And his turned out, you know, he kind of looked like Justin Bieber. He kind of just looked... Not that great. Okay. And then another woman actually went to Mexico to get plastic surgery because it was so cheap there. Okay. And what she did is she got a tummy tuck, but they botched it so badly that she had horrible infections afterwards. They had to go back and redo the entire thing, and then she ended up having really bad scarring. So to me, it's just not worth it. Just get ready and be just, uh, you're going to change and get old anyway at some yeah. point. So I don't see the point in yeah. putting how, all this stuff Do you know in how much money that costs? I don't know how much that would cost, but I know that it does get really expensive. <laughs> no kidding. It's time to check in with Griffin on Street Team. Hey, it's Griffin from Street Team. And since it's almost Halloween, we decided to ask some people some questions and find out what they really know about the holiday. What are you guys going to be for Halloween? A pirate. A Power Ranger or something? Uh, I'm going to be a hippie. Spice Girl. Freddy from Scooby-Doo. Halloween traces its roots back to the ancient festival of Samhain. In which country did this festival take place? I don't know, uh, Transylvania? <laughs> good guess, good guess. That, that'd be a logical place. Turkey. Sweden. Spain. Halloween Town? No, it's a country. <laughs> it's Ireland. Oh. Dude, I was gonna guess that. No way. <laughs> What did people originally carve back in Ireland before they carved pumpkins? Potatoes. 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 That's actually been a very common answer, but it's, really? it's turnips. What symbol of Halloween is derived from the tale of a lost soul stuck between worlds who is given an ember of light from the devil to light his way through the darkness? The one where his head is chopped off, you know, when I'm talking about, and he has a pumpkin on his head? Is, that like... is it like a grim reaper? I'll give you a hint. The tale is about a man named Jack. Jack Lang. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the ancient traditional reason for why we wear masks and costumes on Halloween? To get candy. I just thought it was for fun. It is for fun. That's a good reason. To look as scary as possible. I got nothing. All right. It's to scare away evil spirits and to trick them from knowing people's real identities. Okay. For Street Team, I'm Griffin Sassano. Thanks, Griffin. All right, well, speaking of trivia, I actually found some of my own. Would you like to play a little game? Sure, why not? Okay, so of course the obvious pumpkin color is orange, mm -hmm. but there are two or three other ones. There's three other ones. Can you guess the other colors of pumpkins that naturally grow? Uh, not to be painted or anything like that. Grand yellow? No. Well, no? You know, I think you're thinking of a squash. There is a yellow squash, okay. which can look very similar to a pumpkin. Not to be confused, though, because it is not a pumpkin. Okay. It is white, green, and blue. Okay. I know. I'll... I've never seen a green or blue pumpkin. I've seen the white ones. You know the little ones you can buy at Jewel, something oh, like that, those. at the grocery okay. store, and you can paint the little faces on them? Yeah. I've definitely seen the white ones, but I've yet to see a green or a blue one. I've never heard of a green or blue pumpkin before. Do you ever go trick-or-treating? Well, yes, I do, but I've never seen an actual, like, oh, green or blue pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Well, the next trivia question is the most popular candy that is, you know, looked for on trick-or-treating events. Do you know what the most popular candy bar is? M&M? No, it is actually a Snickers bar. Snickers, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you look forward to trick or treating? Or do you used to do it? I used to do it, but I think I, I think I might do it. Yeah. I, I haven't decided yet, but I think I might. Okay, yeah, I haven't done it in quite some time. I used to take my niece and my nephew when we would go trick or treating, and I'd let them get the candy, and I'd kind of pick through it later, or give mm -hmm. them the ones I didn't like. Yeah. But it's always fun. Let's check in with Brooke and our special guest on State of the Arts. Hello, and welcome to State of the Arts. I'm your host, Brooke James. Today, it's our pleasure to welcome Accent Brass, a local brass quintet. The group plays a variety of music and performs on and off Bradley's campus. Here to represent the group is Sarah Long. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you. So who all is involved? Um, well, I'm Sarah Long. I play the trumpet. And then we have Scott Dean, who also plays the trumpet, Austin Wilson on French horn, Luke Stilson on trombone, and Dave Beckholt on tuba. Nice. And are you guys all the same year? Uh, no, actually. Me and Austin are both seniors. 
Scott is a junior, but Dave and Luke are both sophomores. Okay, very nice. And how did you come across the name? Is it just a music reference or? Um, actually, it's a, f it's a funny story. We were performing for what we call Recital Lab in the music department, and the agreement was all black. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the performance, and Dave, our tuba player, shows up in a blue shirt. <laughs> we're like, Dave, what, what are you doing? And so we said, no, no, we're, it's not an accident. We're just, we're just accenting our tuba player. So we're accent brass. Mm -hmm. But it's also a musical term, so it sure. serves a double meaning. Yeah, very nice. And so he, he's the one in the red today. Yeah, he he'll always, that's a staple of the yeah, group, correct? Yeah, he never wears black on top. <laughs> very nice. And what types of um, gigs do you play? Do you only play on campus primarily? or? Um, at the moment, we're primarily on campus. We're kind of on a little break of sorts. Um, but we perform off campus as well. We've played at markets and in schools for educational purposes oh. and then also just whenever people ask us to. Sure, very nice. Yeah. Do you have anything coming up soon? To know um, to we have a recital lab performance for the music department but okay. um, next spring we'll have a whole recital for just us. Perfect, great. And if you want to head over and give us a little lesson, just drop your mic there.
Thank you so much for being on the show tonight, guys. And that's all we have for this week. Join us next week to see more talent from, from around the Peoria area. For State of the Arts, I'm Brooke Janes. Thank you, Brooke. That was very well done. Yeah, it they was. They were all very excellent musicians. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always really interested to hear how the bands actually get their name. Like they said, it was just kind of a chance um, how they came up with it, the accent brass. Right. Because, you know, their tuba player didn't end up wearing black, so I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, that was interesting. So. Um, but yeah, we talked a lot about a lot of things today. Of course, Ebola is a never-ending problem, it feels like. It was. It, you it mentioned, still is. Right. You mentioned last week that Obama was supposed to be taking more measures to make sure that it was not going to be outbreaking more mm -hmm. and more. Is that correct? Right. And they're still pushing that, but there's still, you know, some people who are still getting it and sure. just trying to be quarantined. And Well, let's hope they can clear that up real soon because, you know, we'd hate to have it really, really spin out of control to the point where we can no longer control it. At first, it was just in... West Africa, as you know, and now right. it's just kind of over here. But mm -hmm. we've also talked about things on a happier note. We've got the scary movie coming out, if you like those. Yeah. Or it's already out. Annabelle, if you'd like to go see that. Maybe. I don't I don't know. We'll see. see. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, maybe not. But, you know, I've heard if you watch a scary movie, if you just plug your ears, it won't be scary anymore. Mm. So if you do decide to see it, maybe that's a little trick that you can use. <laughs> maybe. I think I might try that. But I think I'm going to try to go to a haunted house at some point in the spirit of Halloween. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. There are a few... Uh, haunted houses some in, in the Peoria area, but mm -hmm. I don't know where specifically. Sure. Well, we also talked a little bit about trick-or-treating. I just mm -hmm. want to set out a reminder that if you do decide to go trick-or-treating, be careful that the candy is not unwrapped, because if it is, it could have been tampered with. Yes. Um, it's always good to just have extra precautions when, you know, going to houses that, of people that you do not know and mm -hmm. taking food from them. And be with groups of people, because to be going by yourself is not the smartest move. Absolutely. So. I hope everybody has a happy Halloween. You yeah. enjoy the holiday. That's all we have for Mid-State Magazine. I'm your host, Kayla Neitz. And I'm Kyle Peck. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.